This is a video to try and demonstrate what I use for a case when I'm traveling with my bagpipes to either say a competition or a gig. My favorite most recently has been this case from Fusion Cases. All the stuff here that's on the floor was in the case before, including the pipes. And I took a series of photos unpacking the case to kind of show where things go and how much this thing can hold, which as you can see is quite a lot. I thought I'd try to take a video repacking it and you can kind of see where all this stuff goes and everything else. First of all, as you can see, I have my pipes together and the bass drum together leaning against the case and I'm hoping this will show you scale-wise. This is rather a tall case, so if you are flying, this case is not going to work when it comes to just sticking it in there on the overhead bins the correct way, the way that the airlines want you to. They want you to stick it up in the overheads with the feet directly in and say this is the rest of the overhead bin up above you. Um, this case is too long for that. So you're going to have to stick this guy in the horizontal way going that way up in the overhead bin and a lot of airlines don't like that especially if the um, plane is rather full. So handling wise I think this case actually might keep everything safe if you were to check it but the conditions in baggage hold areas you just don't know what the temperature is going to be and they can vary extremely so in order to be safe and make sure your precious pipes don't get cracks in the wood at the end of your trip um, get an early boarding position, pay a little bit extra, get there early and uh, try to prevent problems and then like the worst case scenario is gate check the bag with the pipes not in it. Alright so with all the airline disclaimers out of the way let's try to get to repacking everything. I take my pipes down I'm gonna separate the bass drum as you usually would for most cases. Open it up And there we go, a nice, large, cavernous opening. Now, you can see though, there, there are these padded uh, holders, I guess you might want to call them. That's rather handy, there's a snap on the top of it, and it's also uh, Velcro on the inside. That's why this guy is staying up here. And I'm gonna put the pipes in, give me a moment. Pipes, here they are. And what I tend to do is I will take a t-shirt for some extra security, and I will weave the shirt in and around the mounts. I kind of um, baby these pipes a bit. They're rather old, so I think they deserve a little bit of um, coddling. And then once everything's in place, bag down over here. I'm gonna take the padded area, bring the top piece down. As you can see, this Velcro right there. Nice and securely press that down and then snap it and tighten, make sure it's nice and taut. And this is why I do think that, God forbid, you would have to check this bag. Again, handling wise, you would probably likely be in okay shape. But again, the issue and the danger is not the damage when it comes to handling, it's the temperatures you'd have to worry about. This keeps things nice and tight and intact. I love that. It's a really great feature of this bag. I've gotten the habit of carrying around a second blowpipe one that angles. It's kind of for extra. If I ever forget one or something happens, God forbid, the last thing you want is not to be able to play your pipes because you don't have a blowpipe. All right, and then there's this handy dandy, I don't know, platform um, series of pockets. If this was all open up here, these could maybe jostle around more or you have loose things on top that could nick and fall on your pipes. This prevents that from happening. This nice padded area goes right on top of the pipes. Alright, so I pull this out. As you can see, there's a Velcro lid for all of these pieces. And what I tend to do is my earplugs go on this little guy here. My spare drone reeds. There's plenty of room for at least two sets of drone reeds in here and they're nice and long. So I put those there. Third one kind of tends to be my, ah, my repository for hemp and reed knife and that sort of thing. As you can see, I use a series of hemps and it just goes in there nice and nice and secure. Close that down. And this last one usually gets my handy dandy baby powder so when your fingers get all sticky. 
don't want to leave the chanter. That stuff is invaluable. This big pocket here, that's where my chanters go, or at least I should say my spare chanters. All right, so, actually, sorry, first drone brushes and um, chanter brush goes in the bottom there. I usually have a series of chanters with me. One of my favorite plastic chanters, the Gibson one. Um, so God forbid all of my wood chanters have a problem or if I need to hand out a chanter because someone forgot theirs or has an issue, I'm more than happy to hand that one out. I don't really want to hand these out. And just like the pipes, I utilize an old t-shirt and I wrap up my black wood chanters a little bit just to keep them protected and from bumping around on each other. So these are my two backups. And now my primary chanter goes in this included with the case, well, case for just the chanter. I think it's designed to be for the practice chanter, but I don't really want to protect that or care about that. I care about protecting my actual chanters for performing. Um, this whole thing zipped closed, it keeps it together. So I don't have to go unwrapping this all the time. This comes in here. Take it out here so you can kind of see it on its own. And then this guy I'll leave separately out down over here. It's actually on top of the chanters. I also put my spare reeds that I bring with me. So I got into the habit when I was a pipe major of carrying around a lot of spare reeds. They all have those uh, humidity packs in them to kind of keep them from getting dried out on each other. There's also bunch of stuff in here, some sandpaper for the reeds, a reed mandrel. There's also a sanding stick that a good friend, James Feeney, turned me on to using, this right here. So I have all that stuff with me. Also, I use silica gel in my desk kit canister. And I tend to put those bags right in here. And this whole thing snaps closed. There we go. Okay, so this whole thing lifts in right in there. Now, my canister that I use can usually come up around here somewhere. There's also a spare non-silica holding canister that I can use. I don't use that too, too often, but I always try to keep it with me just in case there's an issue. Up in here, there are more zips. All right, so in these pockets here, I tend to keep my Glengarry. If I don't keep my Glengarry in my case somewhere, I will absolutely forget it. There's gonna be some day I will get disqualified for not wearing my hat. I will figure it out after I'm done and I'll be disqualified and that'll be a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful day. Oh, and I should have mentioned this before. I'm gonna leave this out for a moment. We'll get to that in a moment. Corks actually go in here in the end. I forgot about those. That's the whole, pretty much every cork you need, it's there. And we're almost done here. All right, so chanter goes right inside over here. You see everything's nice and snug, which is a good thing. It's nothing's loose. All right, so zip my Golgari spot closed. And that's the main part of the case. All packed up, ready to go. Okay, nice and tight, but not too tight. If you're finding you actually have to like shove everything down, that's a problem and something's gonna snap. And what's gonna snap will be the weakest portions of your bagpipe. It could be the drone pins, it could be a chanter. You don't wanna be forcing anything. So snug is good, forcing is not good. All right, and then for the top, we have some very large pockets and long pockets. All these pockets that here, there's three of them, total big ones that, that is. They go the length. So this top one here, for one thing, you should be handed there. So this area up here, and then this goes all the way down. Should my hand down there. Uh, it's like a bottomless cavern. In the second bag, same thing. And then this top guy over here, is, I mean, obviously the shortest one, but they hold a lot of stuff. I wouldn't normally carry around Scott's Guards books, but in the interest of illustration, we've got a volume one and a volume two of Scott's Guards. They will fit just right in this middle pocket. Two Scots Guards bricks. <sighs> Not three, two. This is literally the most I would ever try to shove in here. Normally I'd have like a small, maybe one small pipe book or something like that, maybe a folder of music with me. But if you needed to, you can put quite a bit in there. And then there's still room to put a couple of things down in here. Practice channer. If I didn't separate it, 
I can put it in here the long way, all the way down, and then pull the top. And if I'm being really lazy, which is often, I can have my main blowpipe attached to the tube trap. I can shove that down in there. And then sometimes if I'm letting it dry, I'll just do that. I'll leave it there to kind of air out. If I'm not doing that, I can shut that all the way down and bend it. There we go. My tuner, my large tuner that I use. I like this tuner because you can go up to $4.99 with the calibration, so you're not having to think of B flat and everything else. You can actually have it say A because I'm lazy. It still closes without any trouble. Your books are nice and secure in there without any trouble. And then for my final extra garbage that I carry around, here's the extra tube that I will use. If I were to use the bottle trap or just the tube trap alone. Actually, you know what? This guy can go right in here somewhere. This is a clamper. I don't always take this around with me, but if you needed to shorten the read to kind of bring it back to life, this is a great handy thing to have. I believe Sean Husk told me about this thing. And when you got that perfect read that you had for six months and you want to get it back again, you're taking this tiniest, tiniest bit off the top of the read, you bring it back to life. A spare tanner cap, because I lose them like you wouldn't believe. That, and just a pen. Nothing fancy. All right, so as you can see, all that stuff that was there, it's in the case. The only exceptions, this water bottle, actually a water bottle holder on the outside of the case. There we go. And then lastly, there is that kind of material I said to hang on about. Basically a ring cape that's made for the case itself. It goes over the whole case. So when you start getting rained on, not only is your pipe being kept secure, you're keeping them dry. There is your rainproofified fusion case. So all that stuff that was here is now all inside. It's kept pretty well organized as well. So yeah, I'm carrying around a lot of stuff. Uh, but I, you know what? I pretty much always have what I need. I didn't forget my Glen. I didn't forget my hemp. I didn't forget my sandpaper. I didn't forget my reed mandrel. I didn't forget my tuner. I didn't forget my pipes, I hope. Um, it's all there. But I, you know what? If it tips, <laughs> it's really not a big deal. It's kept very, very secure and organized, and that's why I like the case. I'm gonna take the rain cape off. Hopefully it's dry to pack away. A little bit tight because of the Scots Guards books. It's amazing how much room tunes can take up. So yeah, that's in there pretty well. Yeah. One-handed. Amazing feats with one hand. There we have it, your fusion case with all kinds of stuff inside. Hope this is helpful, hope you enjoyed it, and uh, cheers.